Video six in the Jiprock DIY series is about achieving the best possible finish on your job, ready for your choice of decoration. It's a pretty dusty job, so you're gonna need a good dust mask. It's also a good idea to have safety glasses, and if you have sensitive skin, gloves would be good too. You'll also need a sanding float, either 150 grit sandpaper or 220 grit sanding mesh, a pole sander or working platform for ceilings. If you're only working on a small repair project, a sanding block will do the trick, and a soft brush or cloth. So let's get sanding. There are two main types of sanding media, sandpaper or sanding mesh. Sanding mesh is quicker, but care must be taken not to over sand or to scratch the surface of the joint. With sandpaper, it's easier to control the final finish. Start by gently feathering the edges of the jointing compound, taking care not to scuff the paper surface of the board, which can create a furry effect. Sand the middle of the joint lightly using a side-to-side -side motion with sandpaper on a float, or on the diagonal if using mesh, to avoid scratching the surface of the finish coat. After sanding, run your hand over each joint to check for any imperfections. The process is pretty much the same for butt joints and corners, starting at the edges of the compound and working towards the middle of the joint. If any areas of your walls or ceilings need filling, Mark them lightly with a pencil, then come back and fill them all at once with your preferred finish coat. Resand any filled areas when they're dry, and then you're ready for finishing. Simply dust off the surface with a soft brush or dry cloth, and you're ready to decorate. Now there are a couple of issues that you may come across when you start the sanding process that will need to be fixed before you start your painting or wallpapering. The first is called pinholing. Pinholing is tiny air bubbles that form in the set joint, usually when a finished coat has been applied before the previous coats were totally dry. You'll need to sand these and apply another coat of topping compound or all-purpose compound. Once that's dry, sand, dust off and that joint's finished. The next issue you might see is visible tape, which could be due to lack of coverage or over sanding. Just apply another coat wider than the last, let it dry fully before sanding. If you come across any tape that's loose or has air bubbles under it, you'll need to remove that section and reset it. Cut through the tape at each end of the section and gently pull the tape and compound away from the board. Then repeat the complete three coat jointing process. We covered that in video four. Once that's completed and the joint is completely dry, give it a final sand and a dust off and you're done. So now all your joints are sanded smooth and dusted off you have a surface that's ready for your choice of paint, wallpaper or texture coating. If you're painting, a coat of primer sealer is used to create an even surface for subsequent coats. Two top coats are then applied to provide an even finish. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's application instructions. If you're planning to use wallpaper or vinyl, seal the plasterboard surface with a pigmented solvent-based sealer. This will enable the removal at a later date without damaging the plasterboard surface. Thanks for watching video six in the Jiprock DIY series. We hope your project is a total success.